Well, joining me now via the internet is Hugh Montgomery, who's Professor of Intensive Care Medicine at University College London. Professor, we've seen the highest UK deaths in a single day. Do you fear that we're heading for the kind of scale of suffering that we've seen in Italy? Um, regrettably, the answer has to be yes. Um, and the reason for that is uh, the simple mathematics of doubling. Um, and this has been explained before, but if you assume, at the worst case, that every person with the disease can infect three more, by the time each of those has infected people and gone out to the ninth or tenth cycle, you're knocking somewhere in the region of upwards of 55, 60,000 people infected. And people were socially engaged with each other until only yesterday with the lockdown. We still saw these completely crazy mass gatherings at the weekend. Six days of incubation, six to ten days before people hit intensive care units, and then time on intensive care units before they die. So this death rate is going to go up steeply. Intensive care bed use is going to go up steeply, and it's going to follow the same trajectory as the disease infection rate did uh, 10 days or so ago when it suddenly took that uptick. Well, you work in intensive care at a hospital in North London. Uh, we've had yeah. this warning from 13 trusts that they'll run out of intensive care capacity next week. How are you doing? Well, at the moment, we're doing well. And I have to say the NHS, you know, particularly people who work in critical care, emergency medicine and so forth, are cut of a cloth that uh, it makes them somewhat more resilient uh, than others, perhaps, because they've chosen that path. Um, we've done our best. Uh, these are extraordinary times, and we are certainly coping at the moment with the patients we have. But I have no doubt at all that we will be unable to cope. And that's not because people haven't tried or because government hasn't tried. It's just the mathematics of the speed of the rise. So I would expect we're seeing doublings of cases, which means we're now seeing doubling of ITU admissions. And if you can do your own maths, if you imagine there might be more than a couple of hundred people on ventilators now or in intensive care in Britain. I don't know the precise number this evening, but it'll be somewhere upwards of two, three hundred, I guess. If you imagine that doubles in two days, and then that doubles again in two days, and that doubles again in two days, and it will keep doing that until these impacts of social isolation bite and start flattening this curve, flattening the rise. So we're in for a tsunami of cases in the next fortnight. And so when, at what point do you estimate that you will run out of capacity at your hospital, the Whittington? Um, we've had a benign rise at the moment. Um, I Probably inappropriate for me to tell you quite where we are clinically. We're better than some in London. Um, maybe that's because people socially isolate more, I don't know. But either way, we're slightly better off. But at the moment, um, the doubling rate we would be likely, like many other trusts actually in London, to be out of beds by the end of the weekend. I mean, that's very soon. That's extraordinary. What will you do then at that point? Well, we're all trying to do our best at the moment to come up with management plans that can but helps mitigate, uh, perhaps help mitigate people coming to intensive care at all. So the first thing, which sounds harsh, but is not meant to be, is just the conversations with your frail and elderly family, or if that is you, about what is appropriate for you when you become critically unwell. And this is something we planned as an intensive care society nationally, is to have a conversation with people nationally this year about it. It's not just about coronavirus, but it does bring it into focus. Um, that's not rationing. That's not the question of saying, if you're old, we're not interested in you, not at all. But it's just to say, if life is coming to an end naturally anyway, maybe the way that your life ends shouldn't be on an intensive care unit. Um, the second thing, though, is that we're trying to learn from our colleagues in Italy and China and elsewhere about the best ways to manage people without going on to ventilators. And there are some tricks of the trade that seem to be effective, and we have care pathways to try to do that too. But no, I mean, this we've never been here before, and people are going to have to be inventive, and the work is going to be very, very hard. Does this new Excel centre, you know, opening up 4,000 beds that the health secretary have been, has been talking about, does that give you hope? I don't know. Um, and being honest, I don't think there's um, any, any option except to do that um, because we are going to run out of beds. So unless we create massive capacity somewhere, somehow, 
we're not going to be able to cope with the patients. It makes sense to me to put those people in one place as much as one can, because perhaps cohorting patients allows more effective use of staff and more efficiency. But this is a matter of an enormous scale. I mean, a hospital requires staff, um, accommodation, food, beds, drugs, pharmacies, oxygen, ventilators. This is an industrial scale to achieve. Um, mm -hmm. I do know one or two of the people involved in the clinical leadership of that, and they are exceptional. Um, so if it can be done, they will do it. I have no doubt. These are good people. And just finally, we've seen people lighting barbecues. You know, you've got people going to construction sites. What do you say to them as someone who is working on the front line right now trying to save people's lives? Do you know, I've lost my temper now. I, as you may know, gave an interview for um, dispatches for Channel 4 a week ago. And I was trying to be polite to encourage people to do the right thing. But this is criminal and it is not about you. If you're a young person who is reasonably healthy, the odds are overwhelmingly in your favour that you will only get mild disease. But if you pass it on to other people, doing those maths within 10 cycles and you pass that on and you've infected 60,000 people and one in 10 of those comes to an intensive care unit, there are only or were only a thousand intensive care adult beds in this country and you will have caused a tsunami that will engulf that on your own. For goodness sake, stop. Stop doing this. It's wrong. Professor Hugh Montgomery, thank you so much for joining us.